In order to experience victory, which we're going to be talking about, there must be a challenge. A game or a battle or an opponent. And I'm happy to say today as Christians, we've got plenty of opponents. But let's read the first two verses on our page. 1 Corinthians 5, 15, verse 57 and 58. I read this over many, many funerals by the graveside a bunch of times. But thanks be to God, which giveth us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be ye steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord. For as much as ye know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. Folk, whatever you do for the Lord, not in vain. If you do it for him, it counts. Bear that in mind. But I mention the fact that there is a thrill in victory. Uh, and there is agony in defeat. And let me say again, for the saved person, there are plenty of battles to be fought. God didn't promise us a life that would be free from problems because we have them. He really, he promised us just the opposite. He did promise to help us in the battles of life, and we have plenty of them. Right now, each one of us are fighting some kind of battle in our own personal lives. Each one of us. One may be different than the other, but nevertheless, there is a battle. But the Lord forewarns us of the trials to come if we faithfully serve Him. By the way, I mentioned the Super Bowl. We have a group of our preachers and what have you that are, have an outreach team going, and they're over in Atlanta, and they've been there now for a couple, three days, and they've out so winning. Pray for them as they're there uh, on the field. Uh, Brother Jonathan Smith uh, keeps most of us informed on uh, Facebook. And Brother Simmons, another fellow that I knew his dad real well, or granddad, uh, is working with its outreach there in Atlanta. And each year, that's not anything new, each year they have brochures and what have you printed up for the event. And they go into the Super Bowl cities. So pray for them as they go. Because their trials are going to be there. Uh, if we faithfully serve the Lord, and let's read, if you will, 1 Peter chapter 4, verse 12. Beloved, think it not strange concerning the fire trial which is to try you as though some strange thing happened unto you. But rejoice inasmuch as ye are partakers of Christ's suffering that when his glory shall be revealed you may be glad also with exceeding joy. If ye be reproached for the name of Christ, happy are ye, for the spirit of glory and of God resteth upon you. And on their part he is evil spoken of, but on your part he is glorified. Now, yeah. but let none of you suffer as a murderer or a thief or as an evildoer or as a busybody in other men's matters. Yet, if any man suffer as a Christian, let him not be ashamed, but let him glorify God on this behalf. Folks, if you're trying to get somebody to heaven, you've got to tell them about Jesus, because he is the way. He's not one of the ways, he's the way. And folk, without him, 
There is no way. But thank the Lord God sent him, and he paid the price that we owed, and we're here today.